Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech and today what we're going over is how to check the refrigerant charge on an outdoor air conditioning unit. So this is an outdoor condenser. I'm going to show you how to connect your gauge set, how to read the charge to tell if it's low on refrigerant correct or overcharged, and then I'm going to show you how to disconnect the gauge set so that you don't steal, accidentally steal a lot of refrigerant out of the system. So make sure that your handles are shut. That makes sure that your uh, basically your red gauge, which is your high side, does not connect into your service port right here. And also this side, your low side, suction does not connect into your yellow service port. It would be very bad if you had both of these handles open while the system was running uh, and liquid refrigerant went right into the vapor port. So now we're reading our pressures on the low side and the high side. I'm going to uh, tape my T2 sensor right here onto the liquid line, and I have my T1 sensor already taped onto the suction line. You could use clamp uh, style temp sensors. I just like these bead type temp sensors, and you just tape them right on. And you wanna make sure that these sensors are out of the sun uh, and that they're within three inches or so of the service ports. So you see T1, we're reading 60 degrees right here on the suction line, and we have T2, we're reading 90, 91 degrees. All right, so this, just so you know, this is a field piece ST4, and this is actually calibrated just to make sure that it's all zeroed out. And with this temp reading here on the liquid line, and your high side gauge, you'll be reading subcooling. For the suction right here, that temp sensor and the low side gauge, you'll be reading superheat. So what you need to do is you need to determine if you have to check the refrigerant charge with either superheat or subcooling. And if you have something like this right at the front of your evaporator coil, these are fixed orifices. Uh, this right here, these two are capillary tubes, and this is a piston chamber. Inside here is a piston. That, once again, is a fixed orifice. You may have to actually take the cover door of your evaporator coil off just in order to determine what metering device you have if it's not on the outside. It also will say it on the rating plate, but you may want to verify. So if you have a fixed orifice, you're going to be checking superheat, which means you're going to take the suction temperature right here minus the saturated temperature. If you have something that looks like this, that is a thermostatic expansion valve. And if you have that, then you want to be checking the charge with subcooling, which is the temperature right here and the sat temperature. So you take this pressure reading and you bring it into the saturated inner ring temperature. And this one happens to be R22, which means it's the light green. And this actually reads 100 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. So that is the middle of the outdoor coil is reading 100 degrees. So you just take that 195 PSIG from the outer ring, you bring it into the sat temp. If it was R410A, you'd be looking on the pink ring. Now you are also looking down at this, so it might look not quite like it's 100, it might look a little bit less than 100, but it's 100 degrees saturated temperature. So we take that 100 degrees minus 90 degrees on this liquid line, and you have 10 degrees of subcooling. So here's the outdoor rating plate. It says 10 degrees of subcooling. And it also said R22. Now if the outdoor unit said TXV metering device where it said piston metering device. You really can't go by that. You have to go by what's installed at the evaporator coil. If it says a piston size, that's just telling you the size that it needs. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's the size that's actually in the unit right now. So always verify the metering device at the indoor coil. But since this unit actually has a thermostatic expansion valve right in the front of the evaporator coil, and we have 10 degrees of subcooling, the target is 10 degrees, and that means that we are good on refrigerant. If we were reading, say, 18 degrees of subcooling, then that would mean that the unit's overcharged. The other thing is if the subcooling read, say, 2 degrees, which means that, say, this was 100 and this was 98, then that would mean that it's only 2 degrees of subcooling, and that would mean that the unit is undercharged. The other thing that you want to pay attention to is one is the superheat and two is the actual sat temp on the evaporator coil. What you want to do is you want to verify to make sure that your 
uh, vapor gauge saturated temp reading is above 32 degrees. And you see that we're about 40 degrees right now. So let's just go ahead and go and check the superheat as well. So you see our suction line temperature reading is 54 degrees and we have a saturated temperature of 40 degrees. So you take 54 degrees minus 40 degrees and you have 14 degrees of superheat. A TXV's job is to actually maintain the superheat. So uh, air conditioning TXV's typically holding the superheat at roughly 10 to 14 degrees of superheat. So the superheat is good. Our saturated temperature at the evaporator coil is above 32 degrees. And our subcooling is correct. So even when you have a thermostatic expansion valve, it, it really doesn't hurt. You wanna, you wanna check also the superheat to make sure that the TXV is working properly and also to make sure that your saturated temperature is above 32 degrees. But in reference to checking the refrigerant level in the system, we're using subcooling for this one. By the way, before I disconnect, I just wanted to show you one thing. Uh, this is a two position service valve. So basically you can have this front seated inside or it's all the way back okay it's not considered a back seat because there's no seal on the inside once you bring this up all the way but you can front seat it so these air conditioning units they come from the factory front seated and then after that after the uh, system is installed uh, this in the inside is actually ratcheted up all the way and then basically you never have to touch this again unless you're doing some type of servicing but you can just go ahead and attach your gauge uh, set to this with your your hoses through this valve core right here. So you just press in on this valve core, otherwise known as the Schrader valve, to get access into the system pressure. So that's when you see these flat caps like this on the top of the service valves. That uh, is basically containing typically a Schrader valve in the port right here. If you see a cap like this, then you're going to have to take this cap off in order to read the refrigerant pressure because there's no Schrader valve over here on the side. These would be a three position service valve and you'd need a ratcheting service wrench for that just in order to gain access to the system's pressure. So on service valves like this you never have to take the caps off when just checking your refrigerant pressures. And by the way if you're looking for the tools used in this video I have them all linked down in the description below. So the sun's moving in on us now and it's kind of blinding uh, the gauges but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the disconnect procedure. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and purge the air out of the refrigerant lines. And so you could do this at the very beginning, right when you attach in, or right after you attach in, or you could do it right before you're going to go ahead and disconnect. It won't change the pressure readings right there. So we're going to go ahead and shut this valve first, then we're going to open up our vapor line, and that's going to get uh, vapor pressure coming out, and we're going to purge the air out here. We're going to shut that. Now we're gonna go ahead and open our high side line. We're gonna do it again. Just until you see just, just until you see that refrigerant come, and that's it. So you don't wanna lose it in the atmosphere, but you do need to get the air out, otherwise you're gonna be putting air back into the system again. So you can leave this handle open just the way it is, and you wanna shut this valve, and then we're gonna disconnect this. And now that you have this off, and the air is purged out of the yellow service line, then you have pure refrigerant in all three of your hoses, and then we can go ahead and charge it slowly into the low side. So all you're doing is, you're, while you're taking the liquid refrigerant out into this hose, you're gonna disconnect this hose, and you're gonna be charging it back into the low side just to make sure that you're not stealing quite a bit of liquid refrigerant out of the system. So if you connected and disconnected about four times, you'd be taking out maybe almost a pound of refrigerant. It's really going to depend on the refrigerant and how much uh, refrigerant's in these hoses right here. Uh, but if you take three ounces out each time, that's, that's a considerable amount of refrigerant. Uh, that's if you have, say, five-foot hoses. You could use three-foot hoses as well. That would help. And if you're just doing preventative maintenance, then what you could do is you could just put the quick connect test gauges on instead so if you're looking for that uh, I did a video on that you can check that out as well so what I'm doing right now is since this is liquid refrigerant I'm only putting it in a little bit at a time into the low side it's kind of like the same way that you do refrigerant charging except you'd wait a longer period of time between each time when you open this 
Uh, basically, we're going to do this until this side and this side are the same pressure. That's when we know that there's only vapor left in the refrigerant hoses. You don't want to add too much liquid into the vapor side because it's going to go straight into the compressor unless it's, say, a heat pump that has an accumulator in it uh, in order to protect the compressor. We're pretty, we're pretty much there probably. Uh, we could probably just let this open. See, this is now going down and we are now equalizing, meaning equalizing the pressure on here while the system is running, not equalized as if the, the system is off. We're gonna go ahead and shut that. I'm, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this gauge as well and we can go ahead and disconnect our, our vapor side right here. Now what I want to do is leak check the Schrader valve or valve core ports right here just to make sure that they are sealed up and that there's no refrigerant leaking out of them. What I use for that is a valve core removal tool and some uh, bubble leak detector. I have this link down in the description below. This is that Rector seal uh, leak detector with a dabber. I just try to avoid putting the leak detector right in there so all I'm doing is I'm just adding uh, this on temporarily so this is just the one part of the two part valve core removal tool and then I'm just going to put bubble leak detector in the end and I'm just going to watch this and see if a bubble ends up forming coming out which would mean that there's a refrigerant leak if it holds then I can go ahead and blow this out after I disconnect it okay so it's been about a minute and there's no bubbles that have formed so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this and I'm going to check the other side as well So we're good to go and we can go ahead and put our valve caps back on. So now that we don't have any leaks, we can go ahead and blow this out with dry nitrogen or compressed air uh, just in order to get the uh, bubble leak detector out. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash tech. And if you're looking for the tools and supplies used in this video, I have them all linked down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.